Now out of the box, Home Assistant comes with some pretty impressive integrations and configurations, but there's gonna be a time where you're gonna to want to do something just a little bit different. And in this video, I'm gonna show you five integrations via hacks that you're gonna to want to install. Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek. So today I'm going to go through five integrations, front end and otherwise, uh, that you can install via Hacks. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that is the uh, Home Assistant uh, Community Store. There's um, a link up above to a video that I've done on that, how to get that all set up and everything. Um, but it's probably a pretty essential thing nowadays, uh, you know, to, to kind of get those extra features that you see on everybody's kind of like dashboards and you know the the home assistant setups uh, because it's just kind of like stuff that other people have developed that isn't part of the standard installation package so um, as i say i'm going to go through five of the things that i've got installed that i use uh, on a day-to-day -day basis um, they they add flexibility to my home assistant setup and uh, i think you'll want to install some of these as well. So first up, in terms of integrations, I've, it's a couple of front end ones, so I'm cheating here, I'm doing two in one, uh, but you'll understand why in a, in a second. Um, so basically I'm using a stacking card and card mod. So I use these basically to um, combine two different type of, uh, two sets of entity information into one card that goes on my dashboard. Um, so, you know, if you think kind of like a normal layout, you've got a grid layout, you can have your cards side by side like that. You've got um, borders in between, you've got gaps, that kind of stuff. Um, with this, this allows you to effectively put a card inside of another card. So, um, you know, in, in terms of layout, it, it gets rid of all that kind of like border uh, excess th that's there and the spacing and things like that. Uh, and I think it just looks a little bit neater overall as well. So as I say, there's a stacking card. So that is the one that lets you put the card inside the other one. And then the card mod, uh, which is extremely powerful, um, you know, way beyond what is, uh, you know, what I'm talking about in this video. Um, but I use that to then remove the border uh, style from the uh, the entity cards that are there. So just quickly show you the YAML for that. As you can see, I've got the custom stacking card and then I've got my person entity card. And just here, you can see the actual uh, styling there where it removes the border. And then the card that I'm stacking inside that is the, um, uh, you know, an entity card for my mobile phone. Uh, and that is the battery level. And uh, the end result is you know, on this screen here, you can see that the, the two of them are effectively merged into one. Now I could go and do things like, you know, um, better positioning, I guess, you know, I could have it, uh, uh, you know, a bit more closer to the actual um, person. I could add in other cards as well. So I could have more information in there if I wanted to, but that's just what I've got set up for the moment. Okay, so the next integration I've got is another front end one. And I guess, you know, if you're thinking about putting Home Assistant on a tablet, on a wall, or, you know, you use uh, Home Assistant on your mobile phone a lot, something like that, um, you know, this one, you'll probably want to implement this. So this is the Home Assistant swipe navigation. And basically, you know, it, it does what it says. It allows you to swipe through your dashboards. Uh, you know, really uh, small amount of YAML that you need to just put at the top of your uh, overall configuration for your, your entire uh, dashboard. Um, I've got this set, as you see here, that I can actually use the mouse uh, so that when I'm um, testing it out on, uh, on a you know, desktop PC, I can actually just use the mouse to go and swipe around. As you can see, really quite straightforward to go and use that. But, you know, swiping on devices, tablets, mobile phones, it's quite, um, you know, everybody's used to that. It's an intuitive thing nowadays. So to not have that functionality within uh, your dashboard, I think, you know, if you're expecting other people to use it, they probably would want to do that. Um, so really simple. 
and um, you know quite powerful in, in what it lets you uh, do there. So that is the Home Assistant Swipe Navigation. Okay, so next up is uh, and just a standard integration and uh, this is Battery Notes. So I've been using this for a little while now. Um, There's really quite interesting uh, you know, what this brings to Home Assistant. So, you know, if you're using um, plugs and light bulbs, then this probably isn't going to be much use to you. But once you go down the route of using things like door sensors, uh, temperature sensors, or, you know, all those kinds of things that, that will actually use batteries, then something like this becomes invaluable uh, within your setup. So um, basically you install this and it will auto discover many many uh, devices uh, you know it picked up everything that i had that had batteries when i first ran this uh, there's a huge database of devices and um, you know you basically when you go into your devices in your settings it will show up there and you can click on the configure button and uh, it'll default to what it knows about that device so kind of like the batteries that you need to put into it things like that um, but then, you know, when you've got that all set up, uh, the real power of this comes in later on. Uh, so, you know, when you change your batteries, you can, uh, you know, click a button and go and say that you've gone and changed your battery. Um, but then you can uh, also go and tie this in uh, to your automations as well. So, you know, I'm sure people are now starting to think about uh, you, you know what you can do about getting alerts with regards to low batteries and things appearing on dashboards and things like that um, really quite powerful what you could do with this and your automations it's just you know if you've got a lot of devices you know just that initial setup that you're going to have to do but even just from the basic level of knowing what type of batteries uh, devices require and you know when they're running low have that kind of information to hand I think most people would appreciate that Okay, so next integration is the Alexa Media Player. Now, this is uh, you know a bit more than just kind of like starting and stopping playing music of your uh, Echo Dot, something like that. Um, I actually use this for the text-to-speech service, and um, I've got a couple of automations that I am kind of like playing around with at the moment where I use this. So, um, uh, the first one that I've got, first automation that I actually use this in is that uh, we have a particular door on the house that uh, because it folds in the middle uh, if when you're opening it you leave the key in the door um, then you can quite easily go and snap the key uh, so uh, i have a door sensor set up on the door and when the door starts to open then it will set the volume to maximum volume on the echo device that's in that room and it will shout out basically that you need to go and take the key out of the lock before you fully open the door and then it sets the volume back to uh, to, to a normal level again so uh, works really well not broken any more keys since we broke the first one but um, you know you can kind of see the type of stuff that you can do there I've got another one which you know if you want to do kind of like your own basic home alarm type of thing uh, you know this is a similar kind of thing so uh, you know I'm setting this so that you know if any doors or windows are open um, whilst they're actually out of the property then it will uh, you know go and set the volume really high on the echo devices and it will play a, uh, a siren uh, from Amazon services and uh, that will come out over the uh, over the echo speakers so really really useful uh, again, you know, lots of stuff you could do here beyond just the playing music, uh, you know, on your, on your different speakers. So the last integration I'm going to go through on this video is Browser Mod. Again, another one that got lots of functionality. I only use a part of this. Uh, so, you know, there, there's lots of good stuff there. I definitely recommend having this one installed, but I use it for pop-ups. Um, you know, people have asked me on some of the previous videos that I've done, you know, how have I gone and done something uh, to display that information? And this is how I've done it. I've used browser mod to be able to do that. So, um, you know, on my dashboard here, I've got some uh, mushroom chips cards. Uh, you know, I've got ones for uh, lights that are switched on. I've got doors that are open. Uh, you know, I've got motion sensor 
detection and stuff like that. So basically, whenever um, the count on one of those goes up, I can click on one of those chips and it will display a pop up of um, you know those entities that have got either you know an on state or an open state or whatever and um, it's really really simple to do um, you know very very powerful uh, i use this um, to display uh, kind of like network bandwidth on my router um, you know so that i don't have to have all of this information on one dashboard at one point in time i can click on my router on the dashboard and it will display more information there for me so it kind of keeps the clutter down on your dashboard if you want to keep it pretty clean and uh, minimalist you know you can just have all that information pop up in a new window so there you go those are five integrations that i've got installed via hacks which uh, hopefully you found that useful and maybe you know you will go away and go and install some of those uh, i'd love to know your thoughts down below in the comments you know what you thought are you using some of those you know how you're getting on with those um you know are you using something uh, an alternative to one of those that i've, I've gone and mentioned today again you know let me know down below in the comments uh, if you've enjoyed the video then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel it really does help uh, the channel out uh, with engagement and youtube's algorithms all that kind of stuff um, but as always thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video bye for now